so in this uh, uh, as we have uh, already seen that you know how to uh, you know we we have challenges you know there are certain challenges which are posed by multi valued attributes and how can we actually deal with that uh, uh, in the relational model that is what we are going to see in this particular section and uh, here uh, uh, so this is uh, nothing but a small example of the entities um i'll just take the laser so the entity you have entities and you have attributes and there is a relationship between this and there could be many to many one to one one to many all those kind of uh, you know uh, relationships uh, uh, which could be there and from the business rule and uh, when when you when you think about it the business rule can be generic or specific according to the application that you are going to work with and now this is uh, one kind of notation or representation of uh, um of the you know the relationship so say the crop food uh, participation so it's like zero or more that means that uh, the many side is basically optional and this is one or more that means that one side is basically mandatory this is one and only one uh, so this side is basically uh, uh, mandatory and this will also be as it is one and only one sometimes you know you could also see the single line which is basically used and this is uh, zero or one that means that you know this side is basically optional so if you could think about it so a customer uh, can have one or more order but one order will be related with only one and only one customer so this is the meaning of this this is basically a crop food representation um, about the um, and so these are the basic basic uh, sorry uh, these are the basic uh, uh, symbols that we will use that we have just seen so when you have this one extra it's mandatory and zero it is optional and uh, say if in the case of the business rules how we can actually identify this optional and the mandatory representation is this uh, so one entity occurrence does not require an corresponding entity occurrence in a particular relationship so if you have if you could see may that means that Uh, you don't mind i mean like say for this particular example if you could see a customer may have many cards that means that customer have an option of not having any cards as well that's a, uh, that's the meaning of this particular statement a card can be owned by one customer so it's like one and only customer so when you look at this particular relationship the customer owns zero or more cards so this part is basically optional but he can also have multiple cards and a card is basically related to one and only one customer so that is how the uh, uh, that is the kind of the relationship which you could have and this is how you will interpret the relationships and say this is one to one example so a student uh, must own a locker that means that it is mandatory that the student at least should have one locker that means like he should have one locker uh, but when you when you think about from the locker side it can have zero or Uh, you know more uh, zero or one student so that's what you have to identify and many to many relationship falls in this way so student takes one or more courses and uh, the course may be taken by many students so it's like zero or more students has to be taken by one, at least you know one or one or have to take at least one course the student has to take at least one or more courses and the course uh, a course could have at least you know no students also enrolled in the course that scenario is also possible right or more so uh, the business rules basically could be uh, specific or generic and it also depends upon the scenario and the application and the rules which are basically imposed upon that particular application so always it's open and uh, so this is uh, exactly the same thing so if you could see that a course uh, will be associated with one class so zero or more classes but a class i mean like you know say for our uh, situation itself we have 26 sections so the course db1 is associated with like 26 classes but one class will have only one course running at a time okay so in the same way you can also have like you know a course you know you are making it mandatory that in my in my university you know one course uh, is associated with one or more classes it has to be so if if it is then the scenario is basically different so that's what it refers it's this is optional but here it is actually mandatory so this is the one which you have to keep in mind and there is something called existence is existence dependence so existence dependence is that uh, there are certain entities one entity's uh, existence is highly dependent on the existence of other entity uh, this is basically the customer entity okay the customer 
and order okay say you have customer and order so customer and order is highly dependent an order cannot be uh, there without the customer okay so that is actually the meaning of that and you can also have this existence independence and there is something called existence independence that means that uh, an entity can exist, exist apart from one or more related entities sometimes such an entity is also referred to as strong entity or regular entity so if you could see that can a customer exist without creating an order so the customer is not having any order at all still the customer can exist but the order cannot okay so you could say that customer is a strong entity but order is a weak entity so this is how you will uh, uh, understand the meaning of existence dependence and existence independence and then comes the relationship degree so you can have unary relationship binary relationship or ternary relationship so this is the best way to understand that and for a unary relationship you know there is only one entity involved and if you have two entities involved and there is a relationship between them they are called as a binary relationship and if there are you know more than three entities involved you could say that uh, is related to a single entity you could say that it is there are three one two and three there are three basically relationships so three it's called as a ternary relationship and now let's uh, recap about this uh, multi-valued attribute so one example which we have seen is that a student can have multiple phone numbers a student can have a phone number so that phone number i mean like you know he can have three different phone numbers so that that means that the phone number which is one of the attribute of the of the student is actually multi-valued so what are the issues with the multi-valued attributes okay so this is what you are going to see so a student so just just consider an example that you know you have a student uh, uh, student table so you have student id class id and student name but this student is basically enrolled in three different classes <coughs> okay so student has enrolled in multiple classes okay so uh, and a class can have many students so student can have many classes and a class can have many students so now what is the issue with this so he has actually you know say uh, registered for three different courses so we could say that course one course two course three okay so three different courses so this means that we have one particular column which with which has got you know multiple values so say if you are actually you know um, querying the database then uh, there is a high uh, high level of confusion which can occur and it is highly different for difficult for us to maintain this kind of data so one solution for that is that you know we can actually you know divide this class id into uh, like class id 1 class id 2 class id 3 uh, and uh, make it into like unique values but the, uh, then the other issue is that say if the student is enrolled in only one class then all the other classes has to be put as null otherwise you know missing values and there will be a lot of other constraints you know violations can hap happen so there are there are certain issues which are actually you know um, uh, you know which are, which occurs when we deal with the multi-valued attributes itself so when we look at this uh, so how can we do that so what we basically do is that so if we have some issues like that uh, one uh, common thing what we do is that we will use something called as a composite entity it is also called as a joining table or a bridging table so if we have two different entities with a many to many relationship in order to in order to deal with that many to many relationship we have certain steps to follow the first thing is that we need to make a composite entity or a joining table or a bridging table so composite entity is that table which actually sits between the two different tables okay so that which has got the many to many relationship and we will break that many to many relationship by with the help of this composite entity and what will be there in the composite entity yes the composite entity will have the primary keys of both the tables which has got the many to many relationship whatever be the primary key of those table that will be actually here in the composite entity so that means that when you think about the student table you had student id and when you think about the class table you had class id so we will actually form a new table uh, which will act as the composite entity uh, to break the many to many relationship between the student table and the class table we will see how so what we happen what we what we basically uh, going to do is that the first step say if there are two different tables which has got a many to many relationship the first thing which we are going to do is that we are going to create um, 
say uh, we are going to create we are not going to create like this like you know class id 1 2 3 because we are already told what is the issue because say if we are you know creating we sometimes you know one student might take five different courses so and there is a student which takes only one course then all the other fields will be null so and if you are not putting null there will be a lot of constraint violations which can happen right so now what we are planning to do is that say we have a student table and we have a class table and which has got a many to many relationship instead of going with the many to many relationship and you know while querying we can have lot of confusions which can occur so in order to break this we will follow two steps the first step is nothing but we will come out with a new table this new table is called as the composite entity or the composite table or the composite entity or the bridging table and which will simply have the primary key of the first table and the primary key of the second table okay so this is the first thing which we will have and what we are going to do is that we are going to uh, say if you, if you take the so what will be the primary key of this particular composite table you cannot take this student id because student id alone is repeated you cannot take this class id because you know classes might be repeated 5 5 is re repeated so your only choice here is that you have to take a combination of student id class id so that means that uh, your primary key for this particular table itself will be student id comma uh, class id that means 1 3 will uniquely identify the this particular row 1 5 will uniquely identify this particular row 1 9 will so you are actually going to take your primary key will be a combination of student id and uh, class id so this will solve the purpose so now what you're going to do is that now when you see the relationship between the tables the student id so you have the student id one so this one will be uh, having one to many relationship here because one is basically uh, repeated many times here but here as the primary key is uh, basically student id uh, class id you will have one to many relationship and when you look at the class id uh, the class table and the st uh, student class table you could see that there are so many places where you know this five is basically repeated so you are not taking it sim uh, you know simply once instead of that this class id will be related to you know one five one you know one five one three one uh, like that so it's like you know uh, each one it's it's basically a combination so again here if you look at it it is a one to many combination so the student can have you know multiple student class ids but one student class will be related to only one student i mean like if you take this one three that is actually related to only one student id one okay and here also if you look at it the uh, this uh, the the class is basically related the class id is or the class you mean the class is basically related the class is related to only one student class that means one it is one three it is two it is uh, you know two one or two four so uh, it is only just th that combinations and when you look at the student class as two one it is actually related to only one unique um, what is that uh, so uh, this will relate only or this will have only one uh, relationship in this particular table so uh, what we basically do is that we have two steps in order if we have a uh, two different tables which has got many to many relationship the two steps which we have to follow in order to avoid the issues is that first we need to develop or we need to create a composite entity table or composite entity or table that means which has got the pr uh, primary keys of both the tables and the primary key of this table will be like you know student id uh, class id together and uh, when you look at the uh, relationship what you are going to do is that you are actually splitting this one many to many relationship into one to many one to many you are splitting it into two one to many relationships okay so when you when you think about the student id student name this class id is basically one of your you know this is basically your uh, foreign key and uh, which will be you know relating to this particular table and when you look at the class you know, the student id is basically the foreign key so that's why they are called as the pfk that is primary foreign keys and uh, the pfk of this particular tip so pfk is basically the combination of student id and the class id so that's why they are called as a pfks so when you look at it so m to m so any m to m relationship is there it is basically converted into two one to m relationships to re resolve this multi-valued attribute issues so whenever you deal with uh, say you are designing a data uh, database okay you are designing database you have two different tables which has got a many to many relationship it is your duty to change that many to many relationship into two one to many relationships so that you know uh, it actually takes away the issues which are related with this many to many relationships so now when you look at it what happens is that you don't have to you know uh, require something like this 
So it, it basically has got the student ID and the class ID and it basically uniquely identifies it. So now a multi-valued attribute in the crop foods model, it will be represented like this. So you have an office and your uh, primary key is basically given like this of office number and you have got this uh, other attributes office name and office font. So, uh, so when you look at the office font, the office font itself is uh, can have, you know, I mean like multiple values. Okay, in this particular uh, uh, in this particular thing. So this is how it is. So how to resolve it? You can actually you know come out with uh, the office and you can have your office name like office number one, two, three. But the only issue with this is that say if one of the uh, office does not have only one office, one phone number, then the other two values will become uh, I mean like will not be used. It has to be null values. So in order to do with that, what you have to do is that you are going to create uh, you are going to create a new entity called office font where you have this, uh, uh, you know, the primary key as the, you know, the font serial number and the there is an uh, PFK like the office number. So what you will do is that you will have this office font where you will have the combination of both the office and the font number. So you will have your uh, office office and you will have your office font. So this is just shown uh, one part of the data. So that means that in the office you will retain just the office name. OK, and uh, what you will do is that uh, you will have the office number, uh, the, it will have this office font. So which will have uh, the office number as well as the font serial number. OK, and uh, so what you will do is that each of the office can have zero, uh, can one or uh, more office phone numbers and uh, and each of the office phone number will be basically related to only one office. Number. So this is what basically you could uh, do in order to deal with such situations. And uh, the tutor can have many company, uh, many qualifications. So how can we actually fix this problem? So how can we fix this problem? We cannot have like qualification one, qualification two, qualification three. So that will basically cause you a lot of issues again when you deal with it. Okay. So what you have to do is that you can actually come out with a tutor qualification where you are putting the tutor ID and the qualification ID, and you can make this uh, many to many relationship to uh, to one to many relationships. Uh, so and that's how it is. So uh, the professor teacher multiple classes, right? And uh, the class can be associated with uh, by, with only one tutor. So the same thing how you can basically uh, you know show that in uh, you know in the in the Shen model and in the uh, Crawford model how can you basically show this? So that's what it is basically shown here. And so the composite entity, the main thing which you have to keep in mind is that the composite entity is also called as associative entity or the bridging entity. And the, uh, the uh, whenever you have a many to many relationship between two different uh, uh, tables, you will convert them into two one to many relationship or many to one relationship so that uh, you are actually, you know, making the uh, things more easier for you. Um, and uh, this is again the same representation. So you have a uh, you have the student, uh, student can enroll into uh, zero or many classes, one class can have zero or many students. So the same thing, how can you represent in both uh, ways? That is how it is actually shown here. And uh, so uh, this is another example for your one to many. So you have, so we have three different students, A, B, C and uh, the A is basically enrolled for DB1 and uh, program 1. So you may, might be given with one scenario like that. Okay, so you will have to identify the relationship and then you have to change it and one student B is basically enrolled into DB1 and in networking one and the C is basically enrolled in all the three. So basically when you look at it one student is enrolled into uh, one or more courses and one course is basically enrolled, uh, you know can have one or more students. So this is our scenario. So this is our primary key and this is the primary key for this particular course. So in this particular thing say just imagine that if you are uh, adding the course ID as the uh, uh, primary key. Uh, sorry, as the foreign key for this particular thing, what will happen? Uh, still, you will have this DB1 program and which is coming in. And uh, the other scenario is that you can add the student ID as the foreign key to this particular course. So if you add that, still you will have this A, B, A, C and all, which is actually repeating. So A, A is basically, you know, it, it will be repeated. Uh, you it, So still, in, in both the cases, you have multi-valued attributes. So you need to deal with that. So in order to deal with that, what you have to do is that you will come out with student course, a new one where you will keep the student ID, the primary key of this particular table and the primary key of this particular table is course ID. And this table will be called the student course table will be called as the composite entity or the bridging table. So now directly you will have this uh, M to N relationship that is that you are breaking and you are making it into two one to many relationships. So when you think about the one to many relationship, you have one student uh, will be associated with 
one or more okay student courses so, but here the thing is that you know you have a d b one a net one a uh, you are you are taking the combination so it is one to many okay and when you look over here and uh, the course id is basically dealt with one to many so you can have db ones multiple db ones here but you are actually taking the combination of a db one you know b db one c db one so you are taking the combination so you it will not pass any issue so you are breaking this into two different things and the student course is basically called as a pfk okay that is called as a pfk and uh, uh, for this particular student course so the student id will act as the pfk of this table and the course ID will act as the PFK of this table. And what is a PK? PK is nothing but the combination of both this PFKs. That means student ID and course ID together. And uh, that is what uh, you have to uh, keep in mind. Uh, so that's all it is. Uh, so that's all for the um, understanding of this. So uh, uh, this composite entity is basically existence dependent. That means that say you have student course table which is actually formed which is highly dependent on both the student table and the course table so it is existence dependent so uh, that's all about this so you have basically learned about uh, the multi-valued attributes and how can you actually uh, chain uh, you know the issues with the multi-valued attributes the major issues with the multi-valued attributes is that one single cell itself can have multiple values uh, and you will learn more about it in the normalization. So in order to deal with it, what you could do is that you can actually change it into multiple, uh, you know, attributes. But even if you change it into multiple attributes, the issue is that, you know, uh, one person can have only one mobile number, another person can have multiple phone numbers. So uh, there could be a lot of issues which are coming in. So at the implementation level, that will pose you a lot of issues. So what you have to do is that there are two steps to deal with it. The first one is that create a composite entity model. So uh, the composite entity will be created and composite entity will have the primary keys of both the tables and uh, you know that will act as the composite entity or the bridging table or the associative and this associative will be existence dependent that means that it is highly dependent on the student table and the course table and now what you will do is that you will make the relationship between the student and the student course and the course and the student course as one to many relationships so you are basically making this many to many relationship into two one to many relationship or many to one relationship and you are making this keys so the student id in the student course will be called as a pfk and the course id in the course in the student course will be called as a pfk and the primary key for that particular table will be a combination of both the student id and the course id in the composite entity so that's how it is so uh, hope you understood what is uh, uh, how we are dealing with the many to many uh, uh, attributes in the relational model hope you understood that uh, thank you so much so if you have any doubts uh, please get back to me and also go through the chapter in detail so that you uh, go through multiple examples to understand more about this and how to deal with it. Thank you so much.